Hey everyone, welcome to another session of analyzing and valuing companies. In today's session, I'm going to evaluate the fair value of Facebook, known as Meta these days, and assess whether the stock or the equity ownership in the business is undervalued from a fundamental point of view. Before bothering analyzing any company, I take a look at two metrics. One is the ownership skin in the game and the other one is where the power lies from a, a corporate governance point of view the ownership is because i would like to know who has the financial incentives to create value for the shareholders and if nobody does then who's going to do it for us for us if you're going to invest in a business if no one has the incentive to create value for a shareholder then why would you want to invest in that in the first place the other one is you know, from a corporate governance point of view, who has the power to say yes or no? What should we do? What should we invest in? And so on. And that's going to, you know, tell me a lot about where the direction of the company is going to go. Regarding this case, Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg owning 13% of the company from a financial point of view. So 13% of the company belongs to him. However, from a voting or pow voting shares power, he uh, has 55% of the voting shares. It means if the 45% of the investors wanted to say, don't do this a stupid acquisition, if he wants to do it, he can do it and vice versa. The other uh, thing that I do is look at the income estimate, I look at the balance sheet, assess what's going to be the growth for the business and come up with the fair value based on the DCF and value a company as a going concern after whether growing them, shrinking them based on, you know, uh, where they are in the life cycle. So regarding Facebook, I think there's still room for them to grow. So I value them as a growth company. And uh, we're going to get to the narrative in a second. I guess we all have heard that Facebook is facing headwinds in terms of, you know, having hard time sending targeted ads due to, you know, Apple and Google changing their privacy uh, setting in their iOS and Android, and uh, Facebook is having trouble making money and monetizing the platform they have. The other thing is they're investing heavily into metaverse. Facebook is a declining medium. Mark Zuckerberg is taking a longer view and finding what's going to be the next Facebook or the next, uh, you know, big thing out there that could, you know, drive value and growth for the, for the shareholder and for himself and for the company. Now, why I'm talking about that stuff is because, you know, if Facebook, if I were going to value Facebook two years ago, I would have used the unlevered beta of technology companies. However, you know, Facebook is, you know, being transferred to meta and, you know, shooting for something that is uncertain. As of today, I would think it deserves a higher beta and the regression beta of the business is really not that useful. The current ratio is about 2.5. The total asset divided by total liabilities, excluding goodwill, that's about 3.4. For your information, goodwill is just a plug variable that accountants plug in there to balance the balance sheet when it doesn't balance. But the debt to equity ratio is 4%. The firm, the Facebook, the Meta company is fully funded with, with equity. And given that they're investing in metaverse, you know, going after something uncertain, that's a good thing. I don't want them to have debt. If, if you take risky projects and you have debt, the, you are asking for trouble. And uh, from that point of view, I, I like the, the firm being unlevered and, and, and not carrying too much debt. Currently, they have about $46 billion cash, $16 million in debt. The Buffett SGNA ratio is the ratio that Warren Buffett takes a look at the companies. He wants the SGNA divided by gross profit margin to be less than 30%. It means basically after you pay management, what's left for the owners? The higher this number, the less is left for the owners. And if you are a stockholder, you are the owners, you want what's left most for you. That's, that's one of the metrics that you want to take a look at. This is the most important chart is the revenue from this this is the, this comes from the income statement the red bar represent the trailing 12 months of revenue on the quarterly basis the blue bar represent the quarterly revenue the trailing 12 months revenue is about 119 and you see this number has been stagnating over the past three quarters currently the quarterly revenue is about 28 billion there are two ways to look at the operating income the first one is what you would see on the income statement and if you divide the operating income by the revenue, you get to a number of 28% for the last quarter. Pre-pandemic, pre this number has been about 40, 45%. Post-pandemic, this was about 40%, you know, going up and down 
through you know 45 and going down again but one of the reason this number is volatile uh, it's because this number is subject to research and development we know we've heard you know a lot of talk out there that these tech companies a lot of the value are not on balance sheet patent research a lot of their innovations etc okay so how does it take place? A lot of these tech companies invest either through acquisition or through R&D. And accountants expense R&D. But when you expense R&D, it's a capex that is expected to generate revenue, you know, X many years into the future. In technology firms, you about three to four or five years, not more than that. You reduce the operating income that was income that generated for that specific period. You reduce the, the amount on your balance sheet that should account for uh, invested capital, and you push up the return on invested capital. That's gap. So I use the income statement and the balance sheet to come up with my own version of operating margin and, and, and balance sheet. Going through that process, capitalizing R&D over the past three years on rolling basis, I see that uh, operating margin for Facebook to be around 40, 46%. From here, when it went from 642 to 28, the investors could be panicked, but they're really investing for metaverse. Uh, it's a separate project, the reality lab, etc. So you got to account for that. Once I do that, then I don't see, you know, the margin being, you know, drastically shrinked or, you know, being, de being deteriorated. Uh, Pre-pandemic was about, you know, 54, now it's at 46. I see the decline. It is not that terrible. The decline I see, it's not as drastic as perhaps investors are looking at based on the income estimate that accountants put in front of them. That's really critical in terms of evaluation and also critical in terms of evaluating whether the company earns higher uh, return on invested capital or not. When I adjust for R&D, the uh, return on invested capital is somewhere between, you know, uh, 27 to 31%. The other metrics that I'm really focused on is revenue growth efficiency. It's sales to capital ratio. It's basically for every dollar that they reinvest, how much dollar they re bring as revenue. Regarding Facebook, historically that number was about 70 to, is between 80 to 90 cents. Recently, for the trading 12 months, it's between 7 to 80 cents. Again, that's because they invested so much in R&D and I put that into the book value of research and that pushes up that my denominator and my revenue has been the same. So the ratio is, is shrinked, but that number is really about 80 uh, to 90 cents. So let's get to the valuation. What I'm, what I'm, what I'm, what, what I need for this DCF model. Uh, I need the risk-free rate. So a 10 year T-bond rate, equity risk premium, Dr. Aswath the Moran uh, published the implied equity risk premium every month on his website. He used Edward Yardini and uh, equity research analyst estimates for the future dividend and buyback on the stocks for, and he basically calculated the implied risk premium for uh, what the stocks are expected to earn in, in the next, I think five to 10 years, something like that. Uh, so that's what I would use. Other metrics are really not that important until I get to the uh, unlevered beta. Uh, I'm using a higher beta for this business because you know Facebook has been transformed. So it's getting to a riskier project. So I wouldn't use the 1.15 or 1.20, I'm using 1.35. And I'm not pushing it so much to 1.5 or 1.6 is because it's like a VC fund that Facebook is backing it up. Uh, you know, it's Instagram, WhatsApp, uh, Facebook itself, they are funding this project. So I'm comfortable using 1.3, 1.35, and I'm slowly, you know, reducing that number to 1.18 as this, uh, you know, metaverse manifests, it's manifests and they start monetizing and, and commercializing it and you know the, the risk in the business gets reduced what i can see in terms of, of of revenue happening to facebook is revenue declining between 10 to negative three percent for the next four years and then from there we're going to see two cycle of growth one is slowly the growth is going to ramp up and then this, this growth is slowly uh slows down and then we can value the company as a, a going concern so my narrative is that you know meta will be transformed from current state being a platform focused on social media being a hardware and software company providing augmented reality for uh commercial purposes to other businesses or even entertaining purposes facebook will be declining product funding this vr augmented reality project revenue will be declining for the next four years and um in the other assumption that i'm having is i tend to think that uh, Facebook operating margin 
from mix of VR and advertising is going to be lower than its current form. And uh, I'm reducing that number from 44 to about 37%. But who knows, maybe augmented reality business would have higher operating margin. But at this point, I'm comfortable not being too optimistic or not too pessimistic. Uh, and I'm going to deal with this uncertainty with the Monte Carlo DC evaluation that we're going to get to in a second. So this is my base case coming through the chase cost of cap, cumulative cost of capital. These are the beta for the business for each year. These are the revenue growth. You know, revenue is going to decline 10%, 8%, 5%, 3%. And then we're going to see growth from 3, 7, 12 watts all the way to 20. And then from there, growth is going to slow down. And in f- this is a 14 years valuation. And this is going to be my terminal year. So I'm going, I'm going from 120 billion to 262 billion in, in 13 years. The sales to capital ratio is about 87 per, 87 cents, going to increase to $1. And these are the reinvestment uh, after tax operating income. And uh, this is the present value of free cash flow to the firm. What we see is the value of operating asset to be 388 billion subtracting debt, adding cash, I'm getting to equity value of 418. The stock is currently trading about 366 billion. So it's about maybe 13% on the value. That's my base case. Now I am uncertain about this operating margin that I talked about. I'm very uncertain about how much they have to reinvest into the business to get there. And uh, also the growth rate, like how it's going to, you know, manifest. I don't know, like they may, they may see hyper growth, they may see a slow growth and then hyper growth. I really don't know. Uh, and I don't think anyone out there knows. Uh, so I'm building a Monte Carlo DC evaluation. This is really not rocket science. Uh, this is basically, I am running 15,000 DCFs with different numbers into the uh, model that I have and coming up with a, f- a fair value of, of uh, equity in the business. So doing that for 15,000 times, this parameter that I'm going to discuss in a second, we're going to look at the histogram. Uh, what I'm what I'm uncertain is about the unlevered beta a little bit, so I'm you know, centering as a 1.35, and then the higher bound I'm using a 1.5 for trinomial distribution. The other thing that I'm uncertain is the uh, revenue growth in these three cycles. And I am, you know, putting a standard deviation around um, the center of my distribution. And I'm using, you know, the skewed distribution because I think if there's any surprise going to be on the negative side, as opposed to the positive side during the decline. And I think there will be more surprise perhaps on the positive side if they will be, if they will be able to pull it off. And the other thing is that I'm really uncertain is the terminal operating margin. And if you notice, I have a really high range around it from 22% all the way to 54, but it's a trinomial distribution again, and I'm centering it at 37%. So doing that, I get to this histogram. What does it tell me? This tell me this is a distribution of possible intrinsic equity value in the business. The 50% tell is perhaps going to be the fair value that I should pay for the business is about 1411, similar to my base case, because I just used the base case and I expanded the range around these parameters. The 15 percentile is 352 billion and the 85 percentile is 480 billion. And I see the, uh, you know, the black line represent the current market capital at 366. So uh, perhaps the stock is undervalued. I think it's about 14 percent undervalued. But all of those scenarios that uh, you know, Facebook could be higher valued or not, uh, or it could be less valued or not. It's all into my Monte Carlo valuation. That's, I need to replace all those sensitivity analysis, if you would say, this is the sensitivity. One thing to mention is this distribution, if you notice, is a skewed, and there are higher numbers on the right side as opposed to the left side. And that's like a lottery to get. Like in my, might be, uh, Facebook could be bigger than what I'm thinking. In, in 15 years from today, the numbers could be much larger than what I'm thinking, but I'm assessing, you know, giving it lower probabilities. So if I think of investing being a games of odds, the thing is statistically, the odds are in my favor at this point of having Facebook in a diversified portfolio. I tend to think it's a, it's a reasonable uh, decision. The link to this collab file and all the company analysis that I have done in the past is going to be in the link of description in this video. 
uh, feel free to explore them. I also have the Python script that I built to do this Monte Carlo or point estimate DCF evaluation into my GitHub or my uh, G drive. Feel free to go and use them, do the company analysis on Facebook or any other company that I would like to. And I hope you found this session useful and I see you in the next video. Thank you very much for listening.